I've had a request to show you how to cut templates to make these wings. Uh, you can see the different foam wings that I've built here. You can see some of them are um, flat bottomed, no symmetry whatsoever. Some of them are semi-symmetrical. Uh, some of them are fully symmetrical. It just depends on what kind of wing you want. And one of the things that uh, I keep being asked is that well, where do you get your wing uh, designs from? Well, they're, they come about everywhere. You can get on the internet and Google under images airfoil, RC airfoil, and uh, that'll help you find some of the things. I've located a lot of them that way. Another way that I've actually located them is by on a lot of your sets of plans. This, for instance, is a set of blueprints for a J3 Piper Cub. You can see the wing section right here. I've just traced it out, gone through. There's my wing airfoil for my foam wing. Now I'm building a 14-foot model uh, J3 out of um, styrofoam. I'll show you a picture of it. It's got a flat cord on the bottom. There's the exact um, um, cut for the wing. Now it was too long for me to cut using a wire cutter, so what I did is I simply sanded it down. Uh, but I still use the template on both hands. I just uh, put the template up against it, sanded it down to where it was that thickness and shape. And uh, that's kind of, you can actually, and I did this on, on this particular one, the piece that I cut off across there for my piece of wood, that's just a piece of carpenter's masonite. It's used for the backs of, of cabinets. You can pick it up at any hardware store, Lowe's or, or Home Depot. And I, I like to use this because I can write information on the front of so these. Uh, I, I make a lot of toys. Uh, if you go to my website, papaswoodentoyshop.com, you can see all the toys that I build, and I, I do a lot of uh, patterns. Every one of my toys has a pattern, and it's all made out of this. And I'll put the dimensions in permanent marker on this, or if I just want to scribble a note, I can always erase it off if, if it's done in pencil. So I really like the, this type of, of material. You can see there's another one that's a little bit gray, but my, my different patterns. Now, those are a matching set right there of templates that I used with an open bow. And on the other hand, I've got ones like this one where I only have to build one template for the end of it. And then I drill a, a screw out in the distance. So that my, and you've seen this on some of my other videos as I've actually cut those wings. So I only need the one template. I use a lot of different materials. That one is just a piece of maple. Uh, I like to cut maple. I can get it very, very thin and it has very little resistance along the edge for when my wire drags across it. But you do need to have that edge no matter what it's made out of. That edge has to be really, really smooth. So you've got to do some real fine sanding on it. Otherwise it hangs up and creates problems in your cut design. Just in case you still can't find any of the shapes of these, I'll try to scan some of these in and I'll put them on a website for you that will be located at papaswoodentoyshop.com and um, you can just be able to follow the links uh, where it says uh, airplanes or RC aircraft I'll make some sort of an indicator so that you'll be able to find those uh, and, I'll, and I'll just trace them but let me show you another way that's a real easy way to do it uh, if you look at some of my other wings. That wing right there on my, I call that my, that's a, a, a cub design, but it's uh, also an ugly stick, so we, we're going to call this my cub stick uh, design on the aircraft. But look at the cord on the side of that. That's exactly the same cord that comes on my first aircraft. Uh, my trainer was an old uh, Goldberg Eagle. I just went back and got the plans out and uh, scribed out. Uh, exactly the pattern for the Goldberg Eagle. Now you'll notice that it extends longer than the, the actual wing and I've discussed the reasoning why on that in some of my other videos as I cut the wire it allows the wire to cut off cleanly because it does bow the wire going through. But in order to make something like that let's decide that this was the shape of the wing that I wanted and I wanted to build a, a template for it. 
most of you got buddies that are building aircraft. You want to make some sort of a uh, wing and you want to mimic their wing. Well, it's quite easy. Just stick it right down. Stick it in the center of your piece of paper. I've done this on a number of my boards and there's my template. Now keeping in mind you're going to have to do a little bit of polishing on the ends of it, etc. And that you've got ailerons that are going to be cut into there, etc. So you've got to think about that. Also, you'll notice all of my patterns have got screw holes in them, and all, as do all of these. I just simply thread them right in. I take drywall screws, or you can use any screw out there. Just put your template right up on the end of the piece of material that you're going to cut. Screw it in, and you screw it in right there with your fingers. It's not hard. All it needs to do is just sit there until you finish cutting it. That's the whole purpose of the template. So let's go ahead and, and uh, make ourselves a template out of a piece of um, wood as we prepare to do. All right, I just went to the internet and downloaded these plans. I just typed in RC airfoil or RC co uh, wing cord actually is what I did. It would You'd come up with the same thing. This is called a Clark Y airfoil. It's a picture I just copied and printed. Um, I don't, I can choose the size. This was the size that I printed at first and I just uh, put it into a different program. So I could change the size and that's the size that I printed. If that's the size I could scale it up or scale it down and I'm good with that. Okay, so let's decide that that one right there is the one that I want. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut that thing out. It's going to fit right nicely on my piece of wood. In fact, it's already got the top cord that fits it, but since we're not going to, I'm trying to show you how to make these things, we're going to ignore that top cord. I'm going to take the semi flat part of it down on the bottom like that, and I'm going to draw, tracing my outline. Okay, now there's, there's the outline of my wing cord. You can see it. If you're looking at it really close, you can actually see it on there. Now I'm ready to go ahead and cut it. So we're going to turn the camera around and, and go to my equip, my cutting equipment and set that up. Okay, I'm now ready to cut this. I typically use a bandsaw, but because not everybody has a bandsaw, more people probably have a scroll saw. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off right there on my scroll saw. You're going to notice that I'm a long way from my actual lines. Whipping them out real quick, that's not the problem. The problem is you've got to have a little bit. You try to get too close to that line and try to uh, use it like that with it being so rough, you'll never produce a good smooth wing. So now I'm going to sand it. And I'm also, I usually use a belt sander. I've got a large vertical belt sander in my, in my uh, shop at home. We're going to use an orbital sander instead. If you don't have an orbital sander like that, you could probably just use a block of wood if you really had the desire to do that with. It doesn't really matter what you do it with. I can do it both ways. There you are. You can see I've cut right next to my line. You can't even see my line. I can just barely on there. But now if I compare that against the airfoil I was trying to, there's the airfoil that I was trying to generate. If I lap that over the top of it, you can see that that's just all but perfect. Now there are a few spots. You notice that I'm just a little bit longer than the other one. You know, you got a little variation there. You could either hit that again or realize that that's that's a pretty nice airfoil right there. Drill a couple of holes in it and you can mount it on the side of your foam and off you go to cutting them. Very simple, very straightforward.